Operators of the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant have restarted a system that treats contaminated water, but there are concerns about the system's reliability. Workers on Friday put the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, back online. It shut down on Tuesday when a crane used to transfer radioactive materials stopped working. It was the latest in a series of problems that have hit the system. One of the crane's four motors broke down. But Tokyo Electric Power Company says it can now operate the crane using the three, uh, the other three motors. The company says it will replace the faulty motor and find out the cause of the malfunction. Dealing with a huge amount of contaminated water at Fukushima Daiichi is a major challenge. The company plans to use the system to remove almost all radioactive substances from the water by March 2000. Overfishing has sent global stocks of Pacific bluefin tuna plunging to record lows. Officials in Japan are calling on the nation's fishermen to help by reducing the amount of tuna they catch. International negotiators have agreed to cut this year's haul of young tuna. They're calling for a cut of at least 15 percent from average levels about a decade ago. They're expected to seek further cuts in coming years. Officials at Japan's fisheries agency will suggest that fishermen suspend fishing in some when tuna lay their eggs. They'll also ask fishermen to release any young tuna they catch. Japan has about 16,000 tuna fishing boats. Agency officials will visit fishing communities across the country to make the requests in person. Good news for those in the tourism industry. Japan is seeing more foreign visitors than ever before. And Ron Madison joins us from the business desk with that news and other stories. Ron. Yeah, and it's good news for the government, too, which has really been shooting for that goal of getting 10 million visitors a year. It's finally done that. It's now uh, aiming to double that and eventually get to uh, 30 million visitors. So the weaker yen had a lot to do with it. The domestic uh, tourism industry getting a boost from that. Officials at the Justice, uh, uh, at the Justice Ministry say a record number of visitors visited Japan last year and the number did top 10 million for the first time. Officials say a total of 11 and a quarter million foreigners entered the country in 2013. That's a 22.7 percent rise from the year before and it's the highest figure since the ministry began collecting data in 1950. South Koreans were the largest group of visitors at more than 2.3 million. Taiwanese came next at 2.2 million. The number of mainland Chinese visitors dropped nearly 6.5% though from 2012. Officials attribute that to the worsening of bilateral relations over the Senkaku Islands and other issues. The number of visitors from Thailand jumped 77% to more than 440,000. Thais have become the sixth largest group of foreigners to visit Japan. Travelers from Malaysia increased by 38 percent. Malaysians are now the 10th largest group of visitors. These numbers got a lift in July after Japanese officials waived visa requirements for citizens of Thailand. 100 people across Japan have reported health problems after eating frozen food products now being recalled. This comes after some of the products were found to have been tainted with pesticides. Food processor Maruha Nichiro Holdings is recalling more than 90 kinds of frozen food made by a subsidiary. NHK has learned that 897 people in all but one prefecture had fallen sick after eating the recalled foods. They reported vomiting, diarrhea and stomach aches. A pesticide known as malathion has been detected in nine different products. Levels are set to be up to 1.5 million times the allowed limit. People can easily buy the chemical in gardening shops. It's used to kill mites, aphids and other insects. Police sent investigators to the factory over the weekend. They suspect someone may have contaminated the foods before packaging, possibly on several Japanese occasions. Japanese researchers have achieved another first with cells that can develop into any type of organ or tissue. They've developed a method of creating IPS cells without using animal tissue. They say their method will significantly reduce the risk of infection. 
Researchers from Kyoto University, Osaka University, and other institutions worked together. They used artificially synthesized protein and amino acid to generate the cells. Scientists usually use cow's blood and mouse cells to produce iPS cells. But using the animal's blood and cells in experiments on people carries the risk of infection. One researcher says the new method will become standard in creating iPS cells for medical treatment. A sizzling hot steak, but it melts at the touch of a spoon. A tasty piece of fish that's just as soft. These are foods developed for elderly people in nursing care. A large number of seniors in Japan are unable to eat solid foods. They make up a growing market. The industry is worth more than one billion dollars a year. Many are now looking to create new and better products to try to cash in. For the past eight years, this pharmaceutical company has worked on creating nursing care foods. The company has developed technologies that can soften food, but with little change in its appearance. Two plates of stir-fried shrimp in chili sauce. The one on the right is cooked in the usual way. The one on the left is nursing care food. To make it like that, the company is using cutting-edge enzyme technology. The same enzymes that people have in their digestive tracts. As the enzymes penetrate the food, they soften and break down the proteins and fibers. A lotus root slice treated with an enzyme dissolves in water in just 20 seconds. There's one problem with using enzymes. They tend to make the foods taste bitter or acidic. The company has tested over 200 different enzymes. Some of the dishes took two years before they came out right. It's not enough just to make food soft. We want to make food that tastes good. It takes time. Other companies have different approaches. This is a nursing care version of the traditional plate served at New Year in Japan. It looks as good as the real thing. Besides making food soft and also tasty, the appearance is also crucial. Wow, that's amazing! It's a great job! The New Year dishes were produced by a company in Yamagata Prefecture that specializes in making school lunches. Hideki Saito is the president. That's the first thing people see. They take in what the food looks like. If they can see what kind of food it is, that will help give them an appetite. Usually, when people aren't strong enough to swallow normal food, they have their meals blended into a puree. But that can put people off their food. For the medical community, this is a major issue how to get elderly people to enjoy eating again. People feel that eating a special food is a sign they've lost their strength. It's important to provide them with meals that other people don't view as being special. It took Saito five years of trials to develop a kind of nursing care food that looks just like real fish. He starts by first mashing the fish, then forming the paste into fillet shapes. To make sure the fish looked right, the molds had to be exactly the right shape. He got them made by a company that creates mannequins, using real slices of fish for the molds. The individual scales have been carefully reproduced. To give the fish exactly the right color, this machine is used. It's a printer, designed especially for food, using food coloring to reproduce the pattern of the scales. For elderly people, eating is one of the great joys. I came up with these foods because I want people to be able to experience this pleasure right up until the end of their lives. As Japan's population ages, the market for nursing care food will continue to grow. And so will these edible innovations.
Well, the cold snap, as she said, does seem to be finished a little bit, but many are still feeling the hurt. And now some are wondering if that cold weather actually caused a nuclear reactor in Pennsylvania to shut down. WTAJ news reporter Cody Combs has been looking into it. He joins us live now in the studio. Cody, which nuclear reactor was shut down? Yeah, Leah, this all happened about 35 miles west of Pittsburgh at the shipping port Beaver 1 Unit 1 nuclear reactor on Monday. And first energy operator of the plant is not ruling out cold weather as a possible cause for it shutting down. Now, I just got off the phone with the spokesperson for that nuclear plant who tells me that Beaver Valley Power Station Unit 1 automatically shut down because of a transformer that failed. The reactor safely shut down and there was no impact or public health safety to be concerned about, we're told, but it's still unclear why the transformer failed. A First Energy spokesperson talked with me about figuring out why it happened. So the first question from everybody is, did the weather cause the shutdown? And, you know, again, there's, there's a large number of things that can cause it. We'll certainly look at any potential impact of weather, but um, that's by far not um, the only thing. And, you know, we, we will do a full investigation to determine what it was. Now, that spokesperson also told me no customers lost power as a result of the reactor shutting down. The plant is still shut down right now. Repairs are underway, and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is investigating. Live in the studio, Cody Combs, WTAJ News. Winter in Central Oregon is a playground for outdoor sports enthusiasts in the wintertime, but it's not without serious health risks, though. Femi Bebefe is here with why you need to keep that sunscreen in reach. Femi. Alicia, overexposure to the sun without protection can cause skin cancer or put you at a higher risk to get melanoma. According to the Skin Cancer Foundation, more than 90% of all skin cancers are associated with sun exposure. Doctors say UV radiation reflects off the snow and increases potential damage more so than off water or the beach during summer. One local dermatologist says you should wear the same amount of sun protection in the winter as you would in the summer. Most people don't think about putting on sunscreen in the winter time, but it's just as important in the winter time for people to put on their sunscreen because even though there's cloud cover, you're still getting solar radiation, which causes sunburns and skin cancer. In addition to applying sunscreen every two hours, Dr. Niehaus suggests wearing sun protective clothing. Here's to having a healthy winter sports season. Matt, back to you.